In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the great feast of the Corpus Christi, the very body of our Lord Jesus Christ, present in the Holy Eucharist. And this is the treasure that our Lord gave to the Catholic Church of all time. Archbishop Lefebvre used to love to preach and dwell on this distinctly Catholic doctrine. When Christ told the Apostles, hoc facite, at the Last Supper, he told them, don't just sing about me, don't just commemorate me by reading in the Bible, but he told them, hoc facite, do this action. And he gave the priests, the first priests, the apostles, the first bishops of the Catholic Church, and the first pope, he gave them the power of hoc facite, which is to do the holy sacrifice of the Mass. He gave them the priesthood, the holy set the power to perform the sacrifice, which reenacts Calvary, the sacrifice of Calvary on the altar in an unbloody manner, under the appearance of bread and wine. And he gave the Holy Eucharist to stay with us in the tabernacles where our Lord is reserved. This is so markedly Catholic, the Holy Eucharist. This is what it's is what distinguishes the Catholicism from all the false religions. This is why so many martyrs went to death. In uh, Boston, in the United States, Boston, Massachusetts, there was a procession of the Blessed Sacrament in the mid-1800s. And uh, uh, a Frenchman, his name is uh, the Knight of Saint-Sever, he was one of the guards to guard the priest carrying the Blessed Sacrament on this feast of Corpus Christi. And there was a procession of the Catholics in the street. And at the time, the know-nothings and the wasp and the, the anti-Catholic sentiment was very high by the Protestants. And uh, a Protestant attacked the priest, attacked, he attacked the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And this night, he repelled him, and in, in fighting him off, he was killed. And uh, he died a martyr of the Holy Eucharist, to defend the Holy Eucharist. And uh, in your own history here in Scotland, and in this whole area, England, Wales, we were just in Ireland this morning, this is what distinguishes the Catholic churches from all the other false churches is the faith, and the faith in the most incredible reality of the real sacrifice of the Mass, and the Holy Eucharist. And this, is, this, is, this puts us miles and miles and miles away from the false traditions. Because when we kneel down before the Holy Eucharist, we kneel down before God. And whether you or I don't believe that He's really there, He's really there. It doesn't matter what we believe. For the Protestants, they distort and they attack this most basic doctrine of the Catholic Church, which is really, really the extreme of the love of God. As St. Thomas Aquinas says in the Mass of today, in the Lauda Sion, not even the pagans imagine the love of God being this great, that He would actually be our food, be our drink be our fire on which to feed and strengthen us and heal our soul and be united to God by, the, the, by love, by the union of grace and, and by the true love. So this is the great feast of this great sacrifice of the Mass and the Holy Eucharist, specifically Jesus present in the Holy Eucharist. And for us Catholics that is such a joy, it's such a great thing, and that's why Normally, it is a great joy to carry Christ publicly in the streets, in the public processions of this day, which should be normal. And as you know, in Ireland and here in Scotland, the Catholic Church was oppressed and persecuted. So much blood shed for the reality of the Catholic faith and all the truths of the Catholic faith. So we, you few Scottish 
who, uh, in your history, you have the, some great, great heroes who really fought for the faith, who really died for the Catholic faith. And I'm sure you're all aware of the Battle of Culloden, where a 45-minute battle where the Catholic men with their, in the highlands with their claymores went to battle against the Protestants. They knew they were going to lose. They knew they were, didn't have much chance. What are swords against gunpowder? But the point was, they were one of the last stands for the Catholic faith. And they died equivalent to martyrs. And uh, there is a song about that, you're probably, I'm sure you're familiar with it, that says, we'll never see such deeds again. We'll never see such heroic deeds again in this land. But God is asking you, He is calling you to a very similar heroic action. When the Catholic faith in the last bastion of tradition is now being sold out by accepting the new Mass, as the leaders of the Society of Advice Attempt have done, accepted the uh, the Vatican II, in the light of so-called tradition, that it enlightens and deepens Catholic tradition, and uh, the acceptance of the new Code of Canon Law. This is not just accepting documents. We have to understand this is really to accept these ideas, is to accept the dethroning of Jesus Christ the King, is to accept the mockery of Jesus Christ the King by pronouncing a mass that mocks him, attacks his real presence, attacks the true nature of the sacrifice, attacks the true sacrificial nature of the priesthood, which the new mass does, and to admit that that is legitimate and accept that without any reaction, is to accept Jesus Christ in his priesthood mocked and ridiculed. And this is why it is so grave, this, because it's, it's really the faith that's being trampled on, that's being rejected. And Bishop Follet himself told this to Campos ten years ago. If you go towards Rome and accept the ideas of Rome, modernist Rome, of course, it's a, he says the faith is at stake. That will be suicide for you. It will be your destruction. Now, we don't know what's got in his head, but he's now saying and doing the very same things. So you, faithful of Scotland, you, you have no choice but to uh, rise up like your forefathers and defend the faith like your forefathers. And it's the faith here that's at stake. And uh, that means you got to make many sacrifices. you got to be ready to give your life for our Lord Jesus Christ, to accept every ridicule, accept every rejection, oppression, for our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the faith. This is the faith. Yeah. And uh, this is why we have no option. We have no other option but to resist this new wave of modernism affecting Catholic tradition now, affecting the Society of the Tenth. And we must resist. And we must uh, persist. As Archbishop Lefebvre said, and it's written on his tomb, I have handed down what I have received. We don't invent the Catholic faith. We don't need to compromise it and add to it. It's what we have received. There's no such thing as living tradition. That's a modernist terminology. Uh, living tradition. Tradition is, is all the deposit of the faith. The scripture and tradition, all that's handed down. And that is our duty, to receive it to love and grow through that and hand it down to our children, hand it down to our, our uh, posterity. That is our duty. And who knows, maybe a hundred years from now, your, your names may be written in the canon of the Mass, or, or in the Missal for defending the faith. But that is what we are supposed to do now. And it doesn't matter what comes. And uh, this is why the glory of your martyrs here in Scotland are so glorious. Because they chose rather to fight and die 
rather than surrender and have a nice life and have a nice pension and have a comfortable living. And that is really uh, our times. And it's a glorious time. And uh, the Virgin Mary, this is what she asked of us at Fatima. And Sister Lucia said, every soul will have to make a choice. Every soul will feel this crisis and this division in our families and in our... Well, look at Vatican II. A whole parish is divided. The priests, bishops, faithful had to divide to stay with Catholic tradition or go with the apostasy. And this is what this is what the real battle on the the uh, the bird's eye view. It's the from the Protestant Revolution to the Communist Revolution to the Modernist Revolution. It's that whole dragon's tail. I've seen John saw in the apocalypse that swept a third of the stars from the sky. That is the sweeping of the apostasy. And Vatican II, as you know, made more priests, nuns, Scottish Catholics, Scottish faithful lose their faith. It did more harm than any Protestant persecution. It did more harm than any communist persecution. It is the greatest disaster in the history of the church. And now that the leaders of the Society of Pius X have adapted, swallowed the poison of Vatican II, and the priests that even preach out against going towards Rome, going with this agreement, going with this preamble, they are immediately punished, silenced which tells you the direction it's going. And it's sweeping towards the apostasy. And that's why you Scots pick up your claymores again. You gotta pick up your claymores. It's the shape of the cross. The real mass. But remember the Greek Orthodox, the schismatics, they have a valid mass. St. Peter's Society, they have a valid mass. The priests who compromised in Mexico and went with the, uh, the Freemasonic government. They had a valid mass. In Hungary, the Pax priests who made an agreement with the communists, their mass was valid. It was a Latin mass. There was no new mass. And the Catholics of all those times, when they knew their priests compromised, they didn't go. They preferred to keep their faith by the rosary, by the, the cross, the clamor, the cross, the mass. And they would find priests that did not compromise. And that's, this is our times. And uh, I didn't ask for it. <laughs> this, this whole crisis took me kind of by, by surprise. And it's, it's very sad because uh, I love the society. I love the work of the Archbishop because it's the, it's the battle of Catholic tradition. Now the leaders have caved in, and they're not denouncing their compromises, they're not rejecting them, they're not correcting them, and they're only punishing those who are trying to say, look, you're, you're going off the cliff. So, you got to listen to the cries of the popes, saying, don't abandon the faith that we taught. Pius the Ninth, Pius the Tenth, Leo the Thirteenth. This is what the Archbishop said at his sermon at the consecration. Hear those voices, he said. I can hear them saying to me, What are you going to do with your Episcopal grace? Are you going to also apostatize and go with the revolution? Or are you going to uh, secure bishops for the church? Should secure the true mass, the true faith for, for posterity. And your. Uh, buried ancestors, your Scottish ancestors, you can hear their voices from their bloody graves, their tombs, where they died noble in battle rather than compromise the faith. You got to pick it up again. The claymores of the faith, the mass, the true doctrine, the true doctrine, the doctrine, the doctrine, the doctrine. St. Paul says to St. Timothy, watch over the doctrine. St. Pius V, watched over the doctrine, St. Pius X, the doctrine, because the modernists were attacking it from within. And he hammered the, mo the modernists who were destroying the faith from within. And Vatican II is really the, the triumph of liberalism and modernism in the church. 
and now it's in our dear society, the last bastion of Catholic tradition. So, pick up the weapons that Our Lady gave us. Your old clamors, polish them up again and sharpen them, because you need them, and the great rosary. And through these means, will we see the victory? Will we, will we see the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary? We will. Maybe not in our lifetime. But in the next life, if we're faithful, you will. And if we see it in our lifetime, blessed be God. But even after a triumph, even after a triumph of the Immaculate of Mary, and if we had a Pope who was a saint now, we would still have to battle for the faith. We still have to do warfare. Life on earth is a warfare. But this is the most trying time now because the faith itself is at stake. <coughs> So let us uh, approach this great sacrifice of the Mass. Very soon the priest will re-repeat and re-actualize the very sacrifice of Calvary right here in your home. Your home becomes like a manger of Bethlehem. It becomes a Mount Talor where Christ is transfigured by His majesty on the altar. It becomes Mount Calvary again. So let us ask our Lord to give us a strong faith like the martyrs. That's our time. It's the faith of the martyrs. And let's ask the Mother of God. She's the strength of martyrs. She would visit, says St. Maximus, she would go visit the apostles in prison, bringing them food, encouraging them. The Mother of God herself. And she was strength to them to face martyrdom to face persecution, to face being whipped and scourged and rejected for our Lord. And it's her we have to turn to, as uh, left to ourselves, we also will get swept away. But if we humble our souls and embrace her weapons, her scapular, her rosary, the clamor of the real mass and the real doctrine, we will stay faithful. O Mary, conceive without sin, a Mary conceived without sin. A Mary conceived without sin. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost.